Hello, this is Dr. Tammy Donato. Welcome to your MSK Day of Your Radiology Rotation. Today we will be discussing the basics of fractures. I will teach you how to identify fractures on radiographs. We will talk about mimics of fractures, and we will also talk about proper follow-up of fractures and fracture healing. Let's get started. Our first radiograph is a magnified AP radiograph of the elbow. Here we're going to discuss what we can, how we can identify fractures. Our line, our simple line over here shows there's a small area of cortical step off. When I first look at radiographs, I look at the cortex and see if I see any cortical discontinuity or cortical step off. Then I look at the trabecula and see if I can see any trabecular disruptions. Fractures can appear lucent on radiographs if there's minimal distraction, or they can appear sclerotic if there's some mild impaction. Also, fractures can be occult, and occult fracture means there's a fracture there that is not visible. After I look at the cortex and the trabecula, I then look at the surrounding soft tissues. On this single radiograph, I see a small area of cortical disruption that is, that is concerning to me for a possible fracture. Now, uh, with time, fractures um, will demonstrate widening of the fracture gap and the margins of fractures will become less sharp. These are actually the first radiographic signs of healing and these are usually present at 10 to 14 days. And that is why sometimes when we uh, find that radiographs are indeterminate and we are not 100% sure there's a fracture, we, will, we as radiologists will recommend short-term follow-up radiographic imaging in 10 to 14 days. And it is important to note that we say 10 to 14 days because this is when occult fractures can be, um, become apparent to us. Following a fracture up too soon can also uh, lead to an, uh, us not being able to see an occult fracture. So now let's look at our next radiograph. Here is an AP radiograph of the pelvis. What do you see? Great. Our next discussion is about technique. This is a poor a poorly um, imaged radiograph. The left hip is uh, not very well seen. So in this patient, the history was rule out fracture. So hopefully we can get a better radiograph and better clinical history. Here is the same patient that we just uh, saw in the previous pelvic radiograph. This is an AP radiograph of the pelvis. I mean, excuse me, AP radiograph of the left hip. Now what do we see? Great. If you look right here at the greater trochanter, we see a small area of cortical disruption. You can also see some very subtle lucency uh, within the um, intertrochanteric region. This is an acute intertrochanteric hip fracture. We can also see um, uh, in the soft tissues that we have some soft tissue folds that can sometimes mimic fractures down here. This is soft tissue right here. There's no fracture going through the trabecula here. Interesting, on this uh, AP radiograph of the left hip, we see the fracture through the greater trochanter up here in the trochanteric disruption, cortical disruption, and we actually have a skin fold also going through there. So that can be hard to identify on um, this radiograph. Okay, so here we have a lateral radiograph of the right elbow and an AP radiograph of the um, elbow. Now what do we see? Great. A lot of you guys are probably thinking we see a sclerotic line right here and we are maybe concerned about a fracture. Let's look at the uh, lateral radiograph again. Once we see the lateral radiograph, what do we see? We see that we have pretty prominent osteophytes and that's actually what's accounting for um, the sclerotic line that we see again on this AP radiograph of the elbow. So this is a mimic of a fracture. This is just a ring osteophyte or an osteophyte going around at the radial neck region that can mimic a fracture. So we're going to move on a little bit and talk about another mimic of fracture. Now we have a cone down radiograph, oblique radiograph of the foot. So what do we see? We see a little area of cortical disruption and we see linear lucency through the base of the fifth metatarsal. We can see this again on this lateral radiograph of the right foot, we see this uh, linear lucency and small area of cortical disruption. And so this is an acute fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal. 
Since we're uh, briefly discussing mimics of fractures, I wanna show you the next radiograph. This is again a radiograph of the foot, the right foot, and this is in a patient that's a pediatric patient. We can first, I know that because we have unfused fices. Here are the growth plates. So we know this is a skeletally immature patient. When we look at the base of the fifth metatarsal here, we see a little area of ossification. Now I have another radiograph. Here's an oblique radiograph of um, the right foot in that same patient, and we see this uh, area of ossification. So many of you may be thinking that this is an acute fracture, but remember that this is a skeletally immature patient, and we all know that skeletally immature patients and pediatric patients are not treated exactly the same as adult patients. And there are many important reasons for this. And this needs to be identified as a, a growth plate or an apophysis. So this is not a fracture. And the way we can identify this is the orientation of this area of ossification. If we notice here, this is parallel to the orientation of the fifth metatarsal. So this is not a fracture. This is a normal growth plate in the base of the fifth metatarsal in a skeletally immature patient. Now here is another radiograph of the foot looking at the base of the fifth metatarsal. So if we look over here, we may see area of lucency here, but this is important to note that this um, has more of a sclerotic margin and it has a larger gap, and over here we have a sclerotic margin. So also at the uh, base of the fifth metatarsal, you can have an accessory oscle, or sometimes you can have an um, unfused growth plate or a non-fused fracture. Um, so uh, nonetheless, this is not an acute fracture. Notice the sclerotic margins here and how this doesn't really fit together um, like a little puzzle piece. So this is not an acute fracture. Okay, now we're going to return, since we've talked about mimics of fractures, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to our original radiograph that we saw in our very first patient. This is that magnified AP radiograph of the elbow where we saw a small area of cortical dis, uh, discontinuity or disruption, which was very concerning for an acute fracture. This is that radiograph um, approximately um, 20, uh, 20 days later. Now we can see that the cortex has started to, uh, to become smoother and we see a sclerotic margin. And this shows that the fracture is healing. And it is very important to follow up fractures because we need to make ensure that they are healing correctly. Um, uh, this is primary healing of a fracture where you have uh, bridging of the fracture um, through, uh, through the trabecula. Now secondary healing of fractures um, is when you get peripheral callus or ossification along the margins of fractures. Um, on uh, second uh, intraarticular fractures, such as a radial neck fracture, only heal by primary healing, which is bridging of the fracture gap. They do not exhibit any signs of secondary healing or peripheral callus around the uh, fracture margins. So that is why sometimes we see um, peripheral callus or secondary healing uh, signs of healing when fractures are not interarticular. 